morning and welcome to this week's Serving of Mickey Waffles, a Disney podcast where we cover everything from parks, movies and merchandise. My name is Sinead. My name's Kate. Hi, how's it going? I'm good, Kate. How are you? I'm pretty good. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Hey. Mm, I can kind of see you in this tiny little box. There we go. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I got my laptop yeah. to eventually work after 15 minutes. Amazing. Just even though it's been working all day, and then it just decides to not work but here we are we're it doing it podcast shy. yeah i think so because this is the only window i currently have open i am not doing anything else with this laptop because it's working and nobody's lagging and i can see me and i can see you and we're all g <laughs> happy days <laughs> kate we're still in lockdown for another yeah three weeks you know watch it don't i know it <laughs> how are you doing Oh yeah, I'm doing okay. Well, I have a little calendar. I have a little uh, countdown. I think it's 22 days oh, until wow. the 5th okay. of May. 22 or 21 days until the 5th of May. Very good. Um, and then we'll see where we're going from there, I suppose. Honestly, I'm really hoping that, because we've been doing really well, we've hit our peak. Yeah. We're on the down. We Our numbers are s- way lower than they predicted. Yeah. Majority of everyone in Ireland is doing exactly what they're supposed to do. We're mm-hmm. a really small country, not the smallest, but we're quite a small country. And I feel like this isn't going to go until October like a lot of people think it will. I'm yeah. pretty optimistic, because if I'm not optimistic, then I'm nothing, that <laughs> come the 5th of May, we yeah. won't necessarily have another like extension, but... Yeah small reopenings of certain things and it's basically just going to go backwards from how they close things in the first place Mm. so i'm hoping that they start to open up non-essentials but with just very strict social distancing and limit of numbers because if that could happen that would be great um because if this keeps going until june i think people will actually lose their minds because you can't keep a whole country in their houses for the rest of the year no no and i keep saying absolutely oh sorry go on I keep seeing loads of posts online being like, stay inside, save Halloween. And I'm like, yes, save Halloween, <laughs> stay inside. Don't, if, if, if I have to miss Halloween because of COVID-19, oh Lord, will not be a good time for anybody. That's so true. Because like, fair enough, you can, um, you can cancel like large events and you can like not have any of those things start again until 2021. That's not going to kill anybody. But like, you got to let people go outside again and start yeah. getting back into their normal lives because... It's no way to live. Yeah. Um, apparently Denmark um, started, Denmark sent all their kids back to school this yes, week. Yes, I saw that. And I was like, hey, Denmark's quite a small country. It is. Denmark actually has a very similar population to us. So I think they might have slightly lower, a slightly lower population and their figures are lower as well. So, Which makes sense. Hmm. So yeah, I so. think we're, I think the whole, I know the whole three weeks things, it was three weeks rather than two weeks because we also have another bank holiday in there. And as we have yeah. seen, nobody in Ireland can be trusted People during the trusted. bank holiday. <laughs> People can't be so really trusted. It makes sense that they did three weeks instead of two, but I'm hoping now after the three weeks that, um, yeah, we can all leave our houses again without being like, where are you going? What are you doing? Why are you in your car? Why is there oh, two of us? Do you both need to go to the shops? Are you both, do you both need to do that? Are you really necessary for this journey? Hmm? <laughs> and the guard gets right in the window, not two metres apart. Thank yeah. you very much, Mr. Guard Shiakana. Yeah. Uh, to be I honest, this, I, I've not been in any cars. I've not yeah, left the house. I was going to say, although I won't lie, I did, I did go in the car today. Um, it was just before, I was like five minutes before I was supposed to be finishing work and my mom wanted to go down to the post office to get stamps. And for context, the post office is literally, what, four minutes from my house, if even case. Drive, yes. Yeah. Walk. Uh, <laughs> so I went just purely to get out of the house. And it was it was quite nice. Yeah, when did, oh, sometime last week, I really wanted Diet Coke and we didn't have any left in the house. But I'd also been on my walk for the day, and so I didn't want to go on another walk. And so I asked my mom if she'd just drive me down to the centre, which is two minutes down the road. Yeah. Which is just so I could just run in. And I was like, I forgot what it feels like to be in a car. Isn't it so weird? <laughs> I was like, what is this? It feels so it's weird. So Considering bizarre. that like a month and a half ago, I finished my last driving lesson. Yeah. For like driving cars. And then I got in as a passenger and I was like, what is this? <laughs> Oh, uh, it's weird. It's weird times. So yeah, that's where we're at. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really, really hoping. See, the thing is, I, I was having a chat with my folks about it last night and I, I was asking them what, I was asking more so my dad. So for context, my dad is very, very high risk. So he literally has not left the house at all, other than having to go in the car with my mom for when she's collecting his prescriptions, but he's not got out of the car. And I was asking him what, him what's the that first man there in the car. Yeah, him. Yeah, for him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was asking what, what was the, the first place that he wanted to go. And it, he honestly, could, he was just, oh, Jesus. I, just, I just couldn't think of like all of the various places that he could potentially go when this is all over uh, and I was like I actually <laughs> don't even necessarily care uh, personally about going anywhere I just want Brefni to be able to come here yeah I just want to be I'll able be to like go there do you know what I mean yeah. I just want to I don't we could do nothing but yeah. I would like to be there <laughs> yeah. yeah I've already warned Bref that he has to move in for at least two weeks and he was like but by that stage I'll probably be going back to work and I'm like nah I don't care I was like, That's we're going to spend so much time together. I was like in a non-controlling girlfriend kind of way, but we're going to spend so much time together. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> he was like, yeah, no, that's fair. I understand. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless them. <laughs> bless them for putting up with us. We both yeah. actually got some like little packages from the lovely Breath and the lovely Ed. What did Ed send you, Kate? Oh yeah, Ed sent me. So he's um a big nerd, and he bought a big Lego set to get him through the the um shut shut down shut in. Um, but because he spent so much in the Lego shop, he got a free Lego set with his Lego set, and it was a cute oh, little nice. Easter egg. Um, and so I made some not so subtle hints that I would like it. Um, because it was pastel colors, <laughs> I, and I was like, I can imagine how you. subtle you were, Kate. <laughs> I was like, look how cute it is. I was like, oh my god, that's so nice. Oh my god. I was like, that's not like the thing you bought at all. Like, that's so not you. <laughs> and then a week later, it arrived in my door. <laughs> hey. Uh, yes, yeah, so that took me all of like five minutes to assemble. <laughs> but it's cute. Um, I'm gonna, it's currently in the kitchen because it was Easter and it was the only yeah. decoration we had. So I'll have to take it out of the kitchen and put it in. As she's as she's looking for somewhere to put it, I'm literally like, mm, where can I put it? Um, <laughs> what breath get you? <laughs> um, so he, we were having a chat with Andrea, and he was mentioning that he was re- I was about to say listening to he wasn't listening to he was reading a Disney Parks book series called The Tales of the Haunted Mansion, and I was Ooh. like, I'm sorry, what is this? I have not heard of this. So it's a fiction obviously based series around the haunted mansion it's told by the ghost host oh yeah this no, is I, well I'm, up your street isn't it just i'm not that far in i'm only like maybe like 20 pages in but um i was saying that i wanted to get them um however they only had the hardback books on amazon and they were i think they're about like 12 pounds each which is not bad they are beautiful books mm-hmm but I bought a lot of stuff. So I was like, I'm going to hold off and get these. Yeah, they weren't your like, four. they weren't yeah. your like need needs. They weren't, they weren't a priority. Not that anything else that I have bought or ordered <laughs> has been a priority, but that's besides the point. Um, uh, and then the first and second book arrived yesterday. So the first one has the stanchion bat on it and it's called the fearsome foursome or something like that. And then book two is all about Madame Leota and it has Madame Leota on the front. So... I'm very excited and I'm definitely regardless of if the story is shite which I don't think it will be because Andrea said he's really enjoying it and I trust Andrea, Andrea's opinion on stuff um so I'm definitely gonna buy the other the other two as well which I'm is mad because you just don't read you're not a very reedy person but I always buy books yeah you love buying <laughs> books but I'm like Sinead you don't read and you're like well, see, maybe maybe this will be the series that'll like get me into it I also mm, yeah, maybe I also hold on not that this is a visual medium, but I'm going to show Kate. I have the most perfect um, bookmark. Oh, oh yeah, your thingy. Yeah, that's yeah. perfect. So the little like plastic things you get on the bottom of um, lanyards from the parks that explain pin trading. I found my Phantom Manor one, so I have that in my little Phantom Mansion book, and it's perfect. They're actually super cute, those books. Like, They're so I, nice. I saw the picture you sent me and the picture you put on They're Instagram, like, but like in, like in your nice. hand, they, get, they make more sense. Also, it's a really like stupid little detail and you definitely probably will not be able to see it, but the pages are kind of like, it's like, it's like it's been battered. But, oh, like it yeah, feels okay. like a brand Distressed. new book, but 
yeah it's all like jagged and stuff can't see a single thing see it's just white i'll send you a picture <laughs> i'll send you a picture uh yeah in the just on the a topic of books but not disney books um oh. i ordered like eight books off book depository because i was like not that i have enough to be reading anyway and i think she I have says them all well, she has two massive piles of books either side of her and has done for the entirety of lockdown Four, five six seven oh what no, is book depository one. Book Depository is actually owned by Amazon. Okay. And it's a website that literally just sells books, but they always do free shipping. Oh, okay. And a lot of the time, the books are cheaper than, uh, like, regular booksellers. The only problem is okay. then if you're giving money to Amazon, which aren't an incredibly great company. Yeah. And when I can, I do support bookshops in town and stuff, even if it means spending yeah, yeah. an extra three or four euro. But in the current climate... um. It was that just a lot. Do. It was just easier for me to order off Book Depository. Um, but the only thing is that they bu- they send everything like individually because it's cheaper. So okay. they, they come over a time of like four days. So like I got my first book last Saturday, and I'm still due one book now. So I'm still waiting for one because they come from different warehouses. So they've got warehouses in like Jersey and that other island down there, but then they've got warehouses up like the north of england as well so they all come oh okay ones. yeah fun yeah so i gotta be reading all those the book i'm reading is pretty good i just when i sit down and read it i end up spending two hours reading it and then i'm like mm, maybe i should go do something else yeah <laughs> i have to say again none of this is anything to do with disney but I, i'm kind of enjoying just having a bit of a chat and i feel like yeah i feel like it because... make, makes up for like what 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 we usually miss and you know yeah. i when i listen to podcasts and the when i listen to the podcast i listen to and they end up going completely off topic for a good 20 minutes i'm like oh this is fun <laughs> yeah i agree i agree i was listening to what was i listening to earlier no it was yesterday i was listening to the new it's not called Diz after dark anymore what's it called now disney parks and beyond or something like that i think they've changed their name to they've made it a bit more pg okay um they, they've taken out the swearing which is good. oh Okay. I mean, we should probably consider doing that, but I feel like we're Irish and people expect us to swear. Yeah, anyway, just, so it's fine. really difficult tonight. Um, but they were, I can't remember what he, they were talking about, but they went on a big, massive tangent and they were like, huh. And just ended up like way down a rabbit hole like half an hour later and was like, what were we talking about? And I feel like we're kind of doing that now. But me, myself, Kate, and the lovely Amy decided we were going to do a book club. And the first book we read, I loved. The second book, I'm not vibing with oh yeah no to be honest now I keep so like every time I go to like do the dishwasher or do some dishes or go for a walk I'm like oh I could listen to the book because that's what I did with the last book yeah but then this book I'm just like oh so what I've actually done is so the book is like 10 hours long and yeah. I've skipped halfway through it and I've gotten to the 1900s okay because then they become slightly more modern princesses because it's basically it's a story it's a book called princesses behaving badly which i genuinely thought was going to be quite interesting and we read the synopsis and we were all pretty happy with it but then when you actually start reading it you're like oh and it's just it's almost like a reference book but just being narrated it's it's just the the issue i have with it so it's like hundreds and hundreds of princess stories and each story is anywhere between two to like five ish minutes long depending on how much research they can do on these princesses and one the woman that narrates it is so robotic to because at least the first 10 minutes of me listening to it i was like is this a person or is this like they've typed it into the likes of siri and it's doing it that way i don't know because when you look at the like the recommendations for it and like the reviews people are like narrator such and such really brings every story to life and i'm like wow <laughs> i mean maybe like it's a it's a very monotone very yeah, yeah. Eh, american voice so maybe that's americans that's leaving those reviews i don't know but the stories all kind of run into each other so it's like we're talking about this person blah 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 i know this princess blah, 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 and that's it like there's no like End. Yeah, there's no like beginning or end it's not very yeah. it's not rounded off very well so yeah mm. basically i've skipped the first I'm four hours it. 
and I got into like the 1900s because okay. I was in because I just found because it starts it obviously goes in chronological order so it was starting with princesses in like 1750 something yeah. um in like dynasty China and like they're interesting but a lot of them are the very samey like a lot yeah. of these princesses basically did good for their village but also wanted the riches and that's basically it for like the first like 25 of them apart from the princess yeah. one the, the the pirate one the very first pirate one she was great oh yeah but the, but, but the rest of them i'm like okay yeah great they did their best for their village and but in the end they end up marrying the people that are destroying the village i'm like Ugh. so yeah, i skipped to like the 1900s which are like okay. slightly more modern and we get into like france and stuff and i'm like oh these are the kind of princesses that i know about so i think i'm just gonna try and do my best now <laughs> from the 1900s <laughs> yeah I'm 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 trying, but I don't know. I basically I just keep skipping to find like different ones so that we at least have like something to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll just pick a better book for next. Cause we'll just pick a better book for next week. <laughs> yeah, I agree. If anybody has any good audiobook recommendations or just book recommendations, please do let us know. Yeah, we're looking for books that are um they're nonfiction and hopefully some form of biographical book, but doesn't have to be. Like a biography, if you know what I mean. Yeah. We should probably get on with the news. Yeah, so basically, the biggest news... <laughs> the biggest yeah. news in the Disney world is that Bob Iger has taken back position of CEO and Chapek has stepped down. Um, we had... don't know if it's momentary. I assume it's momentarily. I presume that Chapek will be back and Chapek took over literally just as this all happened. And he's like, whoa, this is not what I signed yeah. up for. <laughs> and Iger's like, here, give me back my children. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's weird, though, because like, I was actually only thinking the other day that like we've heard nothing from Chapek at all. Yeah. Like, kind of like it had been radio, radio silence. silence. Oh, my God. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, and... I don't know like it could have been a case of the shareholders were just like this this is too we're into financially an unstable position Bob you Bob A you need to go back and just take the reins Bobby you can just go home um (laughs) so I don't know if it was that I wonder again I was listening to the guys from Diz After Dark and Nick was kind of pulling out his tinfoil hat and was saying he wonders if because the timing of Chapik taking over was really strange. It was just a random weekday. Yeah, and it like it wasn't to do with any like it wasn't linked with any like ends or starts of quarters. It wasn't do to do yeah. with like any release of like like economic growth or decline within the company. It was just very random. Yeah, it was just totally like out of the blue. So he his kind of like tinfoil hat hat tinfoil hat theory is that Bob Chapik was kind of put into that position a little bit like a sacrificial lamb and now Bob's taking the reins back for who knows how long. Oh, interesting. I don't part, know. Of me, part of me wants to believe that Chapek was put in. This happened and he is such an awful person that he basically just crumbled and was like, yeah. I can't do this. Like he was like, I don't know what to do. Like all I know how to do is take away the fun from things. How am I supposed to yeah. fix this? Like he was like, how do I yeah. make sure that we keep cast members employed and, but still don't make a deficit. And how do we do these things? He was like, I don't know how to do this. He was like, I just know yeah. how to make things worse. He was like, if things are already at their worst, what am I here for? Yeah. That's the thing. Cause like, it's, well, it's okay. A bleak, what a hot take. <laughs> it's a, no, but like, it's a bleak for, it's a bleak like time for everybody. And especially for people that, can't currently work and that are kind of relying on their employers to pay them an amount for however long they can and we know that kind of cast members don't get treated the best as is they don't get paid enough as is so you kind of need somebody to hopefully try and inspire some sense of hope or some sense of positivity and Bob Chapek ain't it no Bob Chapek is not Chapek Bob Chapek is not that guy. Like, you no. do not look at him and go, wow, what a leader. You look at him and go, wow. <laughs> yeah. Get off the stage, mate. <laughs> yeah. So um, there hasn't been any confirmation as to how long Iger is back for, if he's back permanently, if Chapek will be back. We don't know. But it was it was very interesting to see that. And I get that it is. It's unprecedented times. It's not a scenario 
scenario that anybody would be in a position to deal with in any way, shape or form, because how the hell can you plan for something like this to happen? But I think, I think they need somebody like Iger to help even potentially try and navigate their way through everything that's going on. I also think that like, even like, if we don't hate on Chapek for a second, just look at him as a person that took over the role of CEO as a company. Like, he was definitely still in like his transition period when this happened and still within like his learning period of being CEO. Yeah. And you got to sort of think that he probably like, he definitely wasn't prepared for the situation and it kind of just makes sense to just give the reins back to Iger just for the moment. Cause he's like, look, you don't know what's going on here. You don't know the cast. You don't know the situation. He was like, yeah. I've been doing this for however long, like just, just gave it back for the moment. He was like, because we can't train you up in anything anyway. We can't show you this because it's gone. It's gone now. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, so that also might have been a, like, like from a business perspective. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, but I prefer to think that he just crumbled like a little baby. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't oh, like dear. him. I, just yeah, don't like I don't him. think anybody does. Like, I don't think he instills a whole lot of... Um, anything really yeah true anything fast in fans in anybody but we'll 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 move on from jaybeck anyways um it was announced that thirty thousand cast members from the disneyland resort there has been an agreed furlough which my understanding of furlough is them getting paid whilst the parks are closed and whilst disney isn't really making a whole lot of money so it's ensuring that they will still get paid maybe not necessarily their full wages but definitely an amount of their wages to hopefully get them through in the meantime um i haven't heard anything specific about disney royal cast members or disney pirates or any of the other cast members within the parks or anything like that so i I can't kind of speak to that but i just saw an article online saying that the disney cast members there has been an agreed for a low with them so hopefully everybody's doing okay uh yeah those kind of things are real technical and really vary from country to country so i don't think we're going to talk about that anymore because yeah. we're just going to start spewing fake news um if Absolutely. we move over to france then uh to the home of disneyland paris uh the french prime minister has said that it could be july before places like disneyland paris are allowed to reopen again so yeah. places that have large um gather i was like large large group gatherings large group gatherings yeah um places that have large group gatherings such as disneyland paris or football stadiums or concert venues all of that sort of stuff um tourist attractions all of those things in france definitely not going to be open anywhere near before july um i would say probably more (laughs) towards october um i think disneyland paris might be one of the last things to be allowed open um yeah, yeah, I know, Sinead, sorry. But I just think Disneyland Paris is one of the last things that will be allowed open because yeah. it's, although it's not, and no, although it is quite open, it's also still a confined area. It's not yeah. like Paris, the city, where people are quite, like, can be really far away from each other. Like, Disneyland Paris is quite self contained into its own venue. So, yeah. unless they limit, t- unless they limit ticket sales by half, which they're not going to be able to do because everyone's going to yeah. want to go. Um, I think Disneyland Paris might be one of the last things to reopen in France, but sure. As we say, it's a fluid situation. <laughs> yeah. And I get it. And like, I, given the current scenario that's happening, obviously over here and over in America and stuff like that, I, it, it's hard to imagine what the parks are going to be like when everything does start to reopen because everything has changed so dramatically in everybody's life that it's kind of like hey like how 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 are they going to do it i don't understand because obviously until we have a vaccine for covid19 there like the parks can't 100 percent go back to normal until that is the case so it's like hey how is that going to work in the meantime I don't know. Yeah. Every time I think about it, my brain gets a bit like, uh-huh, what? Well. Yeah, I really wouldn't want to be in charge of trying to figure that out because yeah. even putting all the measures in place, so like if you think about it, so just think about grocery stores, if you will. Yeah. Like Duns and Tesco and all sorts of stuff. The measures that they've had to put in place for this, yeah. now put that into a Disneyland park, but yeah. also think about 
the level of stupidity you're dealing with because yep. a lot of Disney guests are idiots. Yeah. Because oh, they're yeah. like the general public multiplied by 15 because they're in Disney and they think that they can be overly more stupid. So you have to think yeah. of those precautions that they've put into um, the likes of Tesco's and Dunn's Super Value and everything like that. But then also into Disney. Yeah. And then you have to think about that from a financial perspective as well because now they have to pay for all of these extra sanitizing stations and I don't know, do they have to put plexiglass in where there's not usually plexiglass? Do they have to yeah. limit ticket sales by half because they can, they have figured out that if everyone stays two meters away from each other, that they can physically only fit these many people in the park. Like yeah. it's just, it's very difficult. And then you also, and then we also don't know, like if you get COVID-19, do you then become immune from COVID-19 or can you get it again? Cause then you have people yeah. being like, do you put up testing stations? in the park that because there's that test that can tell you if you've had it and then do yeah. you have do you have to start putting in measures like that to be like we need proof that you've had it or proof that you currently don't have it yeah. to let you into the park see it's just it's so it's very very yeah. complicated like i don't see like i definitely don't think the world's going to go back to exactly how it was no ever again i don't think it can yeah, like ever again, not even just straight afterwards. I think there'll be a lot more like sanitization and safety precautions put in place just worldwide. And obviously it'll slowly calm down. Once a vaccine yeah. is produced, obviously everyone can chill a bit. But until yeah. then, yeah, it's going to be a bit weird. But and like, places like Disney are going to suffer the most. Yeah, because like even when you think about it, like before, like flying and stuff like that before 9-11 was very different to how it is now. 9-11 happened and global air travel changed completely forever so i don't see how something on this scale globally won't have potentially an even bigger impact on it so yeah whilst i'm really hoping that they're potentially open in some way shape or form and i can go on my trip in september i am as as the weeks go on i'm getting less and less um hopeful that that'll be the case but who knows who who bloody knows yeah, you just got to remember when 9-11 happened and the air travel changed dramatically. Like, it's just part of everyday life now to yeah, exactly. do security and do all that sort of stuff and only carry 30 mils in your hand luggage and everything. So, like, whatever happens, like, we'll get over it and we'll get through it. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll just be weird. <laughs> yes. And yes, statistically, for anyone around our age, this will be the worst thing you'll ever see in your lifetime, statistically. Hope. I mean, we. You would hope. I say statistically. Yeah. <laughs> Statistics aren't always right. <laughs> <laughs> There's always but an I, outlier. But yeah, <laughs> just 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 to end on a, like a little bit of hope because we got a bit downer there. <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, whilst we're talking about DLP and the reopening of DLP, whenever that will happen, um, I received an email the other day. It was on Friday from. Disneyland Paris. Um, so I have an infinity annual pass. I pay for it monthly. Um, so Disneyland Paris give you the option that rather than outright buying your annual pass, which you absolutely can do if you want, you can pay a minimum amount. So I think for an infinity annual pass, you have to pay a minimum of 60 euro or you could just buy a general entrance ticket to the park and you can redeem that off the overall cost of your ticket, whichever you would rather do but it's a minimum of i think 60 euro and then the balance of that you pay off in monthly installments um i do it that way just because it's to me it's much easier to do it that way than to have this massive lump sum of money whilst i'm also gonna want money for merch so but anyways so i received an email from the annual pass office on friday and i'll just read the whole thing out because it's easier than paraphrasing it so dear sir madame we have made temporary changes to our Disneyland Paris annual pass holder program during this unprecedented time and wanted to inform you. Starting in April, the upcoming monthly payments for annual passes during the closure period will be suspended. These payments will resume the month after the reopening of the resort. In addition, as previously announced, all annual pass holders will have their passport expiration date extended by the number of days the Disney parks are closed. Please check the Disneyland Paris website for regular updates. We thank you for your understanding and we hope to welcome you soon to Disneyland Paris. So basically, they're not going to be charging anybody for their annual passes until the parks reopen. 
and however long the park stay closed for that amount of time will get added on to the end of your annual pass i assume they're gonna have to give you so when they say the month after that's like the free month then is it because that's the month just gone that you've paid for that you couldn't go yes so like they're giving you that free month and then you're gonna pay again because you've already paid for that month yes i would assume so if the park opens in may they won't start charging you again until june yeah, because I, as I was as I was listening to you, I was like, man, I can see a lot of people being getting like fecked over with this. But I was like, oh no, wait, yeah, that that makes sense. They've taken into yeah. account that you have a, you have actually paid for a month that you can't, yeah, um, go. Um, yeah. that's interesting because it must make more financial sense for them to not take the money from you now, but take it from you later. You think they yeah. take the money from you now, because you yeah, because you think because your annual pass will get extended, which means you'll probably go. And then you're going to spend money when you're there. Mm. So then they get money from you twice. Yeah. I mean, they're getting money from you twice anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. <laughs> it's, interesting how, like, it's interesting how like, companies come up with these decisions to be like, wow, I never thought that that would be a more profitable decision for them. But obviously it must be because otherwise they wouldn't have made it. Yeah, absolutely. It's probably, it's probably less hassle. True. In all True. fairness, it's it's probably much less hassle to just pause it for now and then reactivate the payments once it's back up and running. So, yeah, there's probably also some legal thing to do with it as well. That if why would you pay for something that you can't, can't. use? Do you know what I mean? So there's probably yeah. some legal ramifications for it as well. But either way, if you do have a Disneyland Paris annual pass that you pay for monthly, you won't have to pay for it until the month after the parks reopen, whenever that might be. Amazing. Um, the last bit of news we have is also DLP related. Um, Electroland and Pride have been postponed until 2021. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so the word postponed is very important because people aren't going to get their money back. You're just ah. going to take the ticket and go again. <laughs> However, this is what I initially thought when I read it because I was like, because we have a kind of group chat with some other Disney pals and everyone was kind of saying like why aren't why are they saying postponed they run these events every year and my assumption was that they were saying postponed so that people would keep their tickets and use them next year however just before we started recording I had a go on DLP report and they are saying that anybody that had tickets and packages can get a full refund oh okay but if you want I assume if you want you can just use it for pride next year but if, okay, if, well that's if good. the timing or whatever doesn't work, they will give you a full refund, which is fair enough. Okay, that's good. Because I know that, <laughs> completely off topic, but um, Leinster Rugby, I know they were doing the same thing. So like, obviously all their matches have just been postponed yeah. to yeah. a late, they've been postponed until like November because they're like, we're still going to do them, just we're going to do them late in the year. Yeah. Um, and they're like, but if those dates no longer sue you, you can just have your money back. Like they're not going to not gonna yeah. fight you over it. Yeah, me and Mel were due to be going to a festival at the end of may which has been moved to the exact weekend that we're supposed to be in disneyland paris because of oh, course of all of all the weekends of course it gets moved to that exact weekend that's very funny so however they were a little sneaky they didn't actually say what the story was if you couldn't go so i should probably actually check in with mel and find out what the story is because i know she booked ticket protection for some reason i don't know why we've gone to this festival for years and she's never done it before but something told her to do it this time and this was a good time to do it so yeah we'll see i guess yeah and that's it for the news surprisingly a lot surprisingly (laughs) a lot of news considering the whole world shut down (laughs) i mean it's the little things case i meant to ask is there anything you've been watching on disney plus that you've enjoyed this week uh I watched the fourth episode, uh, fourth episode, fifth episode, fourth episode of High School Musical, the musical, the series. And I'm still vibing it. Not as much as I was at the beginning. I feel like, I just feel like I prefer it more if I could binge it. Because it's not one of those shows, like it's not like The Mandalorian. Like when I was watching The Mandalorian before, I was quite happy to watch one every week. Yeah. Because they're like 45 to 50 minutes and a lot happens. And there's lots to look at, and they're be- like they're beautiful to look at, and yeah. there's lots of things to talk about if you're watching it with someone. But obviously, mm. High School Musical, the musical, the series, I just love saying it. Um, 
it's obviously like it's like a sitcom like a disney like a disney channel like kids show yeah and so there's just not much happens every episode and okay. but like the drama and like all that sort of stuff that's still pretty good so like i'm still okay. enjoying it i just yeah. wish they'd release like two episodes a week like i'm not even saying they'd have to release it all in one go because i know they don't like to do that but like yeah. two episodes a week i think i'd be okay with because like the episodes are only like 25 minutes long um, oh okay they're not, they're not very long they're like like, they're like an episode like a disney channel show okay. um so i think that's my only my only problem with that um i haven't really been watching much else on disney plus because i watched tiger okay. king on netflix and that kind of got me Rice. through for a while but i did watch you no know, in our last episode you told me to watch the making magic happen thing where they change over to christmas in oh, Walt Disney World, yes. in magic kingdom um so i watched that it was fine um i enjoyed very cheesy I enjoyed the backstage stuff. I really liked that where mm. they showed you like, oh, this is where we keep all the things. And I was like, ooh, ow. But yeah, it is extremely cheesy. And mm. I hate that like, it's obviously very American, but like every second line is like an embedded advertisement. It's like yeah. on selected nights of the week, you can enjoy Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party here in Magic Kingdom. And then it, yeah. like in massive letters at the bottom, it's like additional price. <laughs> yeah. Um. But they also have, I know we've talked about it before, but the Disney Enchanted Wedding series that none of us are in a place to watch right now. There's no. also a Disney Enchanted Christmas Wedding series. Oh, There's two God. Of them. Yeah, so I saw the Christmas one. I was like, oh, Christmas. Then I was like, no, stop. But Descendants oh, 3 was put up on Disney Plus oh, last God. week or this week. Was that um, the one we watched on Halloween? Was- yeah, and it just dragged on it's not like either of the other two descendants movies which are movie gold and should be oh, on okay. the 100 movies to watch before you die the list um all oh, right okay <laughs> but descendants 3 is just yeah i might give it a go now because i'm able to like pause it and go do something else for 10 minutes and then come back yeah um but yeah it was really annoying because sorry just while we're still talking about disney plus um before i forget they were like hey all these things are new to Disney Plus, and it was Descendants three. Okay, uh, that crap Simpsons short that was before Onward. Ugh. Maggie goes to daycare, or Maggie's first chance, Perfect. or whatever it is. And then next to it was like the Simpsons collections, and I was like, "Ooh, what's this?" And so I clicked into that, and it's like Simpsons go abroad, Simpsons play sports, Simpsons do, this. and it's basically just the episodes from oh, the thirty dear. series where they go abroad and but they're just clumped oh. into one little, and i was so like, like here christmas episodes yeah. i was like lads this is not and this is not new content like you can't oh dear, advertise it as new content so i was like that's a bit that's a bit of a rip and then the rest of it was just like the next episodes of stuff so then it was like imagineering story high school musical middle school the series the mandalorian and i was like here oh if you can only put up three new things and it's been yeah. a month since we've had it i was like okay lads come on get a grip here Oh dear. That's Have you good. watched anything on Disney Plus? <laughs> um, I haven't watched any of the TV shows. I'm kind of trying to save them up and then I'm going to binge them all. I do, do want to rewatch the Imagineering story, but I think I'm going to wait until I can kind of binge them. Um, I did listen to Once Upon a Scream's episode to the, yesterday. What day is it? It's Wednesday. Yeah, yesterday about High School the Musical, the Musical the series and i'm tempted but i i feel like it's probably not my i really don't think it's a beyond i'm not gonna yeah. lie <laughs> yeah. like i don't even think you'd be able to watch it in a cynical sarcastic yeah. way if you know what i mean i just think you'd yeah. be like what is this crap yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll give it a go, um, there's, give a, it a go. There's, a, there's a couple of things that i'm like uh, do i want to watch this one of which being tiger king but i'm gonna hold it as long as possible as i can on that um I watched The Princess Diaries, which... Oh, I haven't watched Princess Diaries in ages. Love Princess Diaries. I was obsessed with the book series when I was a kid. Like, I was absolutely glued to it at all times. Um, what else did I watch? I started watching Endgame on Easter Sunday. And then Easter Sunday got really boozy in my household. Kate has her hand up. I no, you, you keep going, but I want to say something when you're done. <laughs> okay. Um, Easter Sunday got quite boozy in my household, so that didn't go anywhere. Is what you want to say based off of Endgame? 
or based <laughs> off of Easter Sunday? No, neither. Of the, neither of the two things. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the only other thing that I've watched on it was I had a bad day the other day. I had a really bad day the other day. Because you had a bad day. The camera didn't yeah. fly. Like that? It was, uh, yeah. I had just one of the, I feel like everybody's having one of the, and it, it's helpful. I feel like you have at least one a week, just yeah. in the current climate. <laughs> yeah. And it's helpful because weirdly, I feel like the lockdown has made you, me and Amy even closer. And we're all having them on different days. Yeah, we never seem to break down on the same day. <laughs> which is good. Like, I know women tend to sink on other horrific things that happen in their day-to-day lives. But if, if, as long as our like, bad lockdown days don't sink up, I think we'll be fine. Um, so I had a really bad day the other day. So I put on a face mask. I had a curly whirly and I watched Hocus Pocus. And it just made me so happy. Ah, good woman. Good woman yourself. So, Are you freezing them curly whirlies now? I am. I am. They're in the freezer. It's, I, have, it's I have five packs. Better, right? Better, yeah. right? Hey, it's sweet. I, don't, I actually don't know. I I don't know if I prefer them colder. I feel like I weirdly eat them quicker when they're cold. What? Really? They're supposed to last you longer. But see, okay, you, you know, chew have, ice. I like eating ice. Yeah, I literally actually, eat ice cubes. So I never thought of that. Because like when I eat a frozen curly wordy, like it takes me ages because like I can't bite on them. But I yeah. d- never took into account that you're an ice bi- you're an ice biter. Yeah. Love eating <laughs> ice cubes. <laughs> I feel like I sound really weird. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what you know those shows that are like weird obsessions or like weird addictions yeah. and you're like i just can't stop biting ice it's, it's so <laughs> funny though because like brefney is horrified by it because he oh, is, i hate like, it when you do it like, he has <laughs> mega sensitive teeth like super sensitive teeth and i'm just sitting there like munching on an ice cube and it literally like it you can you can tell it like gives him the shivers he hates it so much but it hurts my teeth when i watch you do it because there's no way I could do that. I'm like, ah, ah. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I love it. Nothing, nothing. If you put something in a in a glass for me to to consume, it'll get consumed. Put it that way. Wow, now I sound really it. strange. So I'll let I'll let you go with whatever you had your hand up about. Oh yeah, I was just when you said Endgame, I was like, oh, actually, I watched Ant Man and Ant Man and the Wasp. Oh, very good. Um, I don't know if I said that last week or not, but yeah, for some reason, because I, no, I actually think I told Ed, because then I went on like a big love fest about um, uh, Paul Rudd. I was like, Adam Paul, <laughs> about Paul Rudd. And I was like, isn't he such a great guy? I was like, he was oh. so perfectly cast for those movies because I just forgot how perfect he is in both of those movies and how Batman and the Wasp is still an amazing movie, even though it's a sequel. I feel like Paul Rudd is the next generation of like Tom Hanks. Yeah, like protects him at all costs and he yes. will be in movies forever. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I feel like, me and Brefney have this ongoing conversation where we have something called the dude list, which is just all round great people. And like I'll give you a quick rundown of five people that are hundred percent on the dude list. Um Tom Hanks, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, um Paul Rudd, Emma Thompson, and Miggle D. Higgins. Oh yeah, they're all great. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Yeah, all, absolutely. all wonderful human beings. Yeah, it's absolutely. just all around just cool people that you just you, you just want to have a drink with. Yeah, you're like yeah, come on, let's go. Um, yeah. So I actually think are are we done now? <laughs> should we talk about Dumbo? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, no. Before we get to Dumbo, we should talk about Friday. So. Oh yeah, fr- Friday. Yeah. So Friday, we're doing round two. I don't know when this episode is going to go out, so it'll either have just happened or it'll be about to happen. We'll see how quickly I can get this edited. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we're doing round two of our Disney drinks and quiz. And if this goes out before that happens, DM us on Instagram and let us know and we'll send you the invite. There you go. And if not, Saz, you missed it. Um, the way Glockdown's going, we'll probably have time for at least one more. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah just keep an eye on Instagrams and I'm actually putting the I'm currently so we do Mickey Waffles Wednesdays on a Wednesday on our Instagram and I'm currently going through each week I'm putting up one round of the quiz that we just did so Mm -hmm. if you guys weren't around to come for that quiz make sure you're on our Instagram on Wednesdays I usually put them up in the evening times because I feel like that's when I like to do them so (laughs) <laughs> yeah you know i'm the one putting them up uh so yeah so i usually put them up um around five or six o'clock on wednesdays and you can like do the little quiz there yeah i'm also like 
I think it'd be fun. I like doing the quizzes anyway. So I'm like, maybe even when we aren't in lockdown, because most of the people that were on the call were literally every end of the country. So I'm like, maybe we could do it every once in a while, regardless. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like we'll I see. definitely, I can definitely see us still doing it again every once in a while. Every, definitely not every two weeks, because no. <laughs> once we get back to normal, I'll have things to do. But absolutely, I like once every like <laughs> once, <laughs> once I can leave the house, I'll have a life. <laughs> yeah, like you know, <laughs> and not just stare at my wall of Zoom Zooms and be like, oh, look at that character I didn't know I had. No, Oh, look at that character i don't remember that um so yeah absolutely i think it's definitely something we'll still be doing just obviously not as often because the first one went yeah. in pretty well and i think the second one's going to too yeah absolutely right now we'll stop dithering and we'll talk about the next fantasy land attraction shall we which is dumbo the flying elephant take to the skies with everybody's favorite flying elephant for a breathtaking view of the magic below hey um, would you like me to read the long one? Go for it. Um, thanks. Okay. Hop atop, hop atop. Come oh, on, geez. Disneyland buyers, aren't you fantastic? Hop atop Dumbo and take off into the air on a joyful journey amid the jubilant sounds of carnival music. Based on Disney's animated classic of 1941, Dumbo the Flying Elephant invites you to accompany everybody's favourite circus elephant as he discovers his unique ability to fly. Dumbo's faithful friend, Timothy Q. Mouse, greets you from the arched entry, directing the action with help from his magic feather. They've put magic in quotation marks again. That's not how that works. It is a magic no, feather. Lads. <laughs> As a jovial fairground organ melody begins, Dumbo the flying elephant gracefully lifts off from the ground and magically begins to fly around and around. During your aerial adventure, you can direct Dumbo to soar skyward or fly low by moving the handle inside the Dumbo-themed gondola. Feel the wind in your face as you take in the sweeping views of Disneyland Park below. Beautiful. Shall we, shall we move on to the accessibility? Yes. Atrophy. So. Atrophy. Oh, Ooh, getting there. We all getting ready? Who's slided? So, wheelchair users must transfer into the attraction vehicle alone or with assistance and must be accompanied by at least one able-bodied person over the age of 15. Suitable for guests who have difficulty standing. I also, this is a total side note, but I think it's quite funny that when they talk about people that have difficulty standing, it's somebody with a Zimmer frame. Oh, oh I just, I just see, I understand moved. what you mean. I, I, I get it's, it. It's moved. I but can anyway. visualize. It's, it's moved. Um, authorization to ride the attraction depends on the type of limb atrophy. Hey, hey. hey ding, 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 ding. you have. And full list available from City Hall, Donald S. Studio Services, and the Central Reservations Office. If you listen to that little soundbite out of context, would people would be like, "Why are you making fun of people with limb atrophies?" I know, I know. If this is the first episode that you're listening to, I'm not taking the piss. I just really struggled to say that. <laughs> phrase for a ve- for many just, many episodes just fyi <laughs> um suitable for guests with a learning disability autism behavioral disorder or mental health disorder must be accompanied by an able-bodied person over the age of 15 suitable for visually impaired guests also suitable for blind guests but they must be accompanied by an able-bodied person over the age of 15 suitable for hearing impaired guests suitable for expectant mothers not very Da-da-da. many attractions mm-hmm. are mm-hmm. good mm-hmm. to note mm-hmm. Suitable for guests with a debilitating illness or temporary physical impairment. No service animals are allowed on Dumbo due to the nature of the experience. Service animals are not permitted on this attraction. And interesting, so it has in the interests bit, it says fun for little ones. It does not say not to be missed. (gasps) Oh, but I would consider Dumbo a ride not to be missed. And I would agree. But apparently it is on Paris they're saying you can miss it. But not to miss the little boats in Casey Jr. I yeah. think they're a bit topsy-turvy now. I think they've had one too many I French agree. wines. I agree. And then last few thing, guest policy, supervised children at all times. Children under the age of seven must be accompanied by an adult. And the number of guests with a learning disability, mental health disorder, behavioral disorder or autism allowed onto the attraction as a group accompanied by at least one helper is two. Ooh. So yeah. How do you two? Times. Oh, you could you could fit two in the front and then you in the back. But you can only fit two people per elephant. Yeah, so how would it's it be? It's not two? like the magic carpets. I, it, yeah. unless it means on the whole thing, but I don't know how you oh. would monitor that. Oh yeah. See that? I was like, well. Anywho. Uh yeah, so that's the fun bit out of the way. Uh <laughs> <laughs> that's the T's and C's. 
Um, so yeah, the I suppose we'll just quickly go over the um so Dumbo is classed as an aerial carousel. That's the kind of like ride it is. Beautiful. Um I was like, wow, interesting. So um on the majority of the ones all over the world, apart from one, there are 16 ride vehicles. So the one in Disneyland Paris has 16 ride vehicles and they are mounted on articulated armatures connected to a con- rotating hub. Um, guests, as mentioned in the Disneyland Paris website, guests can use the joystick um, in front of you that operates the hy- hydraulic arm. My God, okay, come on. The hydraulic arm that can move people up or down. And the um, Dumbo's rotate counterclockwise and they also rotate at a constant rate. So they don't speed up and they don't slow down. Apart from obviously when they're stopping and stopping. starting the ride yeah. but like when the ride is in motion it's a constant rate it doesn't get any faster um so they all rotate counterclockwise except for one of the ones in walt disney world that rotates clockwise yeah uh yeah that so that's say. my um that's my schematics there schematics that was the word i was looking for oh, see when you don't you when you don't think about things then you get them don't you now History, thanks. Bye. There you go. <laughs> so, Dumbo was not an opening day attraction in the original Disneyland Resort. It re- was opened by three months after the park opened in 1955. But it is a ride that has been around in the parks since 1955, which is a little bit mad. It was, however, an opening day attraction in DLP on the lovely 12th of April 1992. Also, it was just Disneyland Paris' birthday. And today is Tokyo Disneyland's birthday. Wow. All the Disney birthdays. Wow. Magical times. My mom asked me, she was like, hey, did you guys start your podcast like with Disneyland Paris' birthday so you guys would be like linked? I was like, no. <laughs> you would think that's something that we would have potentially considered, but no. But no, surprisingly <laughs> not. No. Surprising, <laughs> surprisingly not. Um, I saw a really funny fact earlier, but for the life of me, now I can't bloody find it. Well, Sinead's finding that. So, yeah, it wasn't an opening day attraction in Disneyland in California, but it's actually been an opening day attraction in every other park that it exists in. Um, and, oh, was your fact about the ride vehicle outside yep. of the thing? Okay, cool. I'll say that bit then. Um, so, all parks except for Disneyland Paris have an extra ride vehicle located outside of the attraction for better photo opportunities. And when I read that, I was like, that's such a typical Disneyland Paris thing to not have the oh, extra yeah. ride vehicle outside to be like, hey, k- take cute pics. Because I find that Dumbo is one of the most difficult uh, attractions to take a cute photo on when you're on it. Yeah. Because obviously you're like, whoa, oh my God. Um, like clearly just put a spare one outside so people can take pictures in it. Like that's such a DLP thing to do. to just be like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because any of the little like, remember when they had that 25th anniversary little teacup over beside March Hair Refreshments? Like people we were cute pictures to get a picture with that. Yeah. Oh God. They're gas. <laughs> they're like, they're when they the put stuff pictures, like but... that out, people love it. Yeah, exactly. And like, there's definitely room around there, especially like down by the tea. Do you know what? I just think there's so much room that they could put that yes. out there. And I'm like, I, I, I is not Paris. Did you find I your agree. fact? I did. So, during his 1957 trip to Disneyland, former United Pre- States President Harry S. Truman politely declined to ride on Dumbo, the flying elephant, due to the elephant being a Republican symbol. Wow. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, American <laughs> politics in one simple sentence. Like, can we just listen to the atrocity that was this man who didn't want to go on a Disneyland attraction because of yeah. politics? Yeah. I just like, Honestly. And denied himself the sheer joy of going on Dumbo. Absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? Just absolutely ridiculous. <sighs> So anyway, uh, Tokyo Disneyland is the only park to still operate the ride with only 10 ride vehicles, which oh, is interesting. homage to the original one in Walt Disney World that only had 10 ride vehicles and then was updated and then was given 16 to be the, the, the rest hmm. of them. Um, yeah, and so I also noticed when I was doing some research for this, there was a bit of um, controversy, let's say, regarding okay. Timothy Mouse. And where he was, and what color he was. <laughs> and okay. That sort of stuff. So, in Magic Kingdom, when it originally soft opened, it soft opened without Timothy and his disco ball. And also, the Dumbos didn't have any hats, which I find quite interesting. I'm like, 
surely but when you're building things he has a cute little hat nyan, nyan, right you think that when they're building stuff like the hats would just be like on the dumbos yeah so that meant that because like for a soft opening you're kind of like okay cool like we're just gonna try it out but i would assume that like the actual design of the ride would have been done for soft opening you would hope anywho but uh eventually both were added back to the attraction so timothy mouse is now at the top with his little disco ball and he um and the dumbos have all the hats um there was also originally no water fountains on the dumbos in walt disney world because the utilidors that ran underneath dumbo couldn't have the water pipes to facilitate the fountain so yeah um but then obviously disney world had this massive overhaul and completely changed up its fantasy land and knocked down a bunch of stuff and rebuilt everything and so now um magic kingdom has two dumbos the original and the second one and the original one runs clockwise but the new one runs counterclockwise like the rest of them and so they run like in opposite directions to each other so they look like cogs like in a in a clock Oh, fun. Um, so yeah, and the the <laughs> the thing I had about Timothy and his hot air balloon was that in Magic Kingdom, uh, Disneyland Paris and Hong Kong Disneyland, uh, Timothy's hot air balloon had red and white stripes, but in Disneyland Resort, in the original one, his hot air balloon had rainbow stripes. Oh, fun! Like, how do they think of these things? Also, I think it was Hong Kong Disneyland is the only park where Dumbo is not in Fantasyland, but instead it's in, like, it's called, like, Garden of Celebration or something, is what it's called in Hong Kong Disneyland. Um, okay. So, yeah, I just, isn't it mad? Interesting times. Yeah, they're all my facts. I wonder, do you have any more? <laughs> I don't. Well, other than one of the original um, Dumbo elephants from when it opened in Disneyland is in the Smithsonian National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. It was donated by Disney um, on their 50th anniversary. Isn't that so interesting? I want to go see that. There you go. That'd be cool. I think I'd go, to, I think yeah. I'd go see that and I'd be like, look, look. <laughs> I mean, if, if I was in Washington, D.C., I'd rather go see a vintage Dumbo the Elephant than the White House, so I'll put it to you that oh, way. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Which one's more entertaining? I'll give you one guess. <laughs> but anyway, so in, I suppose, in its most basic sense, Dumbo is one of those typical Disney rides where you get in, you have a lever that will let you go up and down, and you spin around in circles. In Disneyland Paris, we have two other versions of this. The other parks also have these, but I'm just specifically talking DLP. In Discoveryland, we have Orbitron, which is basically like a big metal bathtub. Really small. Like, really, really small. (laughs) Sorry, it's like a narrow metal bathtub. (laughs) They're long, but they're very narrow. Um, And then over in Walt Disney Studios Park, we have the Magic Carpets over Agrabah, which is slightly different because you can fit four people in it rather than just two but and it's they basically go, the same and premise. they go like this oh yeah you as can well really, yeah I, I, you either have a lever or you have not a visual little, form but you know what i mean <laughs> not a not a visual medium no um, but <laughs> you either have a lever that brings you up and down or you, you have a bug that you can press and it makes you wobble it tilts you back and forward yeah That's you do a heck and good wobble yeah um also the <laughs> the one in uh studios has a little like viewing platform that you can go up to and take pictures of people oh yeah we probably shouldn't talk about that that. because we'll eventually get to it one day won't we (laughs) one day one day we'll make it over to studios god knows when but one day you know sometime next year (laughs) so i hadn't actually been on dumbo until our most recent trips and after it had had its big massive refurb yeah it's refurb it is not paris was lovely it didn't really change anything like schematically but it made it prettier. Oh, big time. It is stunning. Yeah, it so, got a lovely so pretty. repaint. Like the they cleaned out they cleaned out the water basin so there wasn't any like bottles or crisp packets in it. It wasn't gunked anymore. It's just it's a very pretty yeah. ride now. Yeah, and they put in all these beautiful l- different rainbow colored lightings that go off once it gets dark in Fantasyland. Now there's only a, probably about 3 months of the year they'll ever actually get to see that because Fantasyland gets shut any when it's like even an hour before illuminations just to get everybody out. So it's rare that you actually get to see it lit up. But if you do get to see it lit up, it is absolutely beautiful. 
Yeah, I would also disagree with Disneyland Paris and say that Dumbo the Flying Elephant is definitely a ride not to be missed. Of all the rides in Fantasyland, I put it quite high on my list. Like, it's going to be up there with Peter Pan's Flight because it's just such an enjoyable ride. And if any of you you guys watch Adam Hatton's vlogs, um, there's a vlog series where himself and his friend Gary C recently, well, I say recently, recently enough, went to Disneyland Paris and the Dumbo is one of Carrie C's favorite rides and it's because it's the ride that's always in the promotional advertisements for Disneyland and I'm like oh Literally. my god you're so right it, like when you watch the ads that are on the tv there's always pictures of kids with candy floss in the, the Dumbos in the Dumbos in Dumbo yeah. and you're like oh my god yes that like it's it's just an embodiment of Disney yeah it's one of those it's one of those just quintessential Disney rides it's I would kind of lump it into the same category as the carousel and the teacups. Like when you think of going to a Disney park, they're the kind of rides that come into your mind because they're the ads that they show on the TV and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I feel like I am, um, oh, what's I feel like I missed out for all the times that I didn't make a point of going on Dumbo. Um, my only issue is that Dumbo gets quite a long wait. Yeah, and it's I was, not got a good queue. Yeah, I was just about to say, I was like, you'd want to try and get Dumbo at a very short wait time, especially yeah. in Disneyland Paris, where the wait times that are posted are often wrong. Yes. Um, they're not very good at that because <clears throat> they're not very efficient. Um, <laughs> they don't. So I, I don't know if they still do it in Magic Kingdom, but I know they, not in Magic Kingdom, in Disney World, and I think also in Disneyland, they used to give you a red card. So when you would enter an attraction, they would pick a person at random, they would give them a red card, and you would hold on to this red card literally up until you were getting put into your ride vehicle, and then you would hand it to the attendant. And that would, that's how they would gauge how long the ride went on for. And they would do it pretty frequently it was like a thing to get one of the red cards i only ever got one once and it was i when don't I was going think to me a character but still i don't think they do them in disney world anymore because i know the magic bands basically track yeah. where you are so they don't need to but yeah. i think in disneyland they still do yeah it's just it was fun i loved getting yeah, it that one time that i did cute little thing yeah. um so yeah basically they just don't have that in disneyland paris and yeah a, a lot of the times they just don't care so um the I, I also especially fi- I find it especially with Dumbo that it'll say yeah. it's a 10 minute wait and it'll actually be 25 minutes because the yeah. line is also very deceiving because you don't know how many parts of the line are actually open mm. um, so yeah I highly suggest going on it but try and get it at a low queue what's the longest wait? you'd wait for it? probably about 25 minutes to half an hour dependent okay. on the day because I know that it's fun and I know it's enjoyable and if yeah. it's one of those days where everything is just busy and you just have to decide to queue because other than that you're just going to make yourself miserable and just stand Mm -hmm. there the entire day and not do anything Dumbo is one of those ones that I'd wait for purely I know the actual queuing system isn't fantastic but it is a shaded area as well so if Mm -hmm. you are going in a time where it's quite sunny and quite hot you can get a lot of shade in the queue Yeah. Um, so yeah I'd probably wait up a, a Oh, about half an hour, I'd say. What about you? This kind of really feeds into what you just said. I think I would, if I saw it posted at 20 minutes, I'd join the queue because I know it's probably uh, going to yeah. be a little bit longer than that. Um, I don't know if it was posting anything longer than 20 minutes. I don't know if I would join it unless it was like the last day and it was something that I really, really wanted to do. Then maybe. Yeah, actually, that's fair because if it was posted 30 minutes, I don't know if I'd do it yeah because it is it's a very short ride yeah it is like i would enjoy an extra maybe 15 to 20 seconds on it i think an extra 20 seconds would actually make the ride feel a lot longer which obviously it would because it's longer but obviously they (laughs) have a certain time period that everyone has to go on it to be able to get because it's not it's a very slow loader yeah it's a very slow loader so it is at a disadvantage in that Mm. regard but um yeah Oh, we're just so samey samey on Fantasyland, are we? Yeah, it I think I th- again, I think it's kind of like what we were saying last week. I don't think either of us have very strong opinions on anything in Fantasyland. And I just think we have we both just have the same kind of preferred taste for specific rides. Yeah. 
when it comes to fantasy land where we're just like we we both know how to like calculate our best worth of time for rides yeah. and when it comes to fantasy land it's definitely one of those places where you have to try and figure out your time versus your enjoyment yes um so yeah okay what are you giving dumbo out of five uh four give dumbo a good four the only okay. downside is that it's not long enough like the ride isn't long enough and it can be quite a wait yeah but maybe four and a half i'll give it four and a half actually oh okay i can't Ooh. i can't give it five because there's a couple of things but for a strong four and a half okay I'm, I'm glad you changed your answer because mine was going to be four. Oh, okay. <laughs> so rather than us being <laughs> the exact same, we'll be slightly different. Um, yeah, I really enjoy Dumbo. I think it's really, really fun, particularly where it is in Disneyland Paris, especially when you're up quite high in it. You get a beautiful view of all of Fantasyland, of the back of the castle, which is not quite as pretty as the front of the castle, but it is still absolutely beautiful. Um, it's one of those rides that because it's not too like strenuous, like you can take a video on it. You can take pictures while you're riding on it. And you get some really funny, like, in the moment picture, ad hoc pictures. What is the word? Candid. Candid pictures. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> I was like, of everybody hoc? just like, <laughs> of people just like having a good time and laughing. It's one of, it's similar to Slinky, which yeah. I feel everyone's got to be like, what are you talking about? But if you've not been on Slinky in recent times, you just need to. You, Where it's you just, just don't know. It's not, it's not a particularly amazing ride. It's not like, well, Slink, Dumbo's probably a bit more than Slinky. But like, it's not a massively thrilling ride. It's just fun. It puts a smile on your face. It makes you laugh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially when you have Kate acting like a feckin' maniac with the little lever thing. Oh, oh it's so much fun. If you bring it all the way to the top and then you go vroom and then you drop it, it's almost like Tower of Terror. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, where are you putting Dumbo in your rankings? Oh, um, oh, I don't know. So we have Peter um, Flight, yes. then the boats, Casey okay. Jr., mm-hmm. the maze, small world. I'm trying to think. I think. And then we now have Dumbo as well. I might put Dumbo at my number one. Oh wow! I just I get so much enjoyment out of it. That's so interesting. Like I think it's just, I think it's just fun. You get a bit of a breeze. You're outside. You get some really nice views of all of Fantasyland, and it's just a bit of a laugh. So yeah, I actually think I'm gonna put it as my number one. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, for the sake of being slightly different, I'll put it at my number two. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna keep Peter Pan's flight as my number one because I think That's it's. Fair it's still such like a happy-go-lucky ride and yeah. it's so different and it's so much fun um but i do really really enjoy dumbo yeah for completely different reasons which is why i'll put it at number two because it is very very close to how much i enjoy peter pan's flight yeah um so yeah i put i put dumbo at number two and out of the other similar spinny roundy sit in a thing rides where's dumbo and that Oh, number one. Absolutely. Yeah. It goes Dumbo, Carpets, and then I don't even want to put Orbitron on the list because <laughs> it's stupid and I hate it. And I wish they put literally anything else in that part of Discovery Land. I hate <laughs> it so much. You could put a statue so of pretty, anything though. and it would be better. I, yeah, but I wish they didn't make it a ride. I wish it was just like a pretty yeah. statue that you could just take photos of. But it eats up people. That queue is always yeah, massive. It, it does, to be fair. That's also because this is an extremely slow loader. And I also think they have the problem of adults having to try and get in and out of it. Oh, oh my God. My favorite, one of my favorite moments from our trip with everybody in October was watching Nathan and Kiva cram themselves into this really narrow bathtub rocket ship. And it just was... Because blo- like the hilarious thing is like you see adults going to get in. And they can fit. And then they have to try and fit their bags. And it's just so funny. Because it's like, yes, you might fit. There was a man that had himself and his two children and a massive backpack and thought all, all four things were going to get into this bathtub. He, he was not having a good time. Not a hope. They're just, they're not made for humans to sit in. They're made for 
little tiny tots decision yeah. and me and amy did it once and we're never doing oh my again God, it was so funny they walked around and they were like a security belt and we were like oh yeah that's definitely on <laughs> <laughs> that's, don't that's even worry somewhere. about it you we're, could tip this so upside down we're so in here we ain't going nowhere you could tip this right upside down and we would not be falling out of it don't you worry <laughs> sir <laughs> crank that thing up <laughs> oh dear what a time. and so, I yeah. suppose out of those two types of rides um, if you because I remember what two types at, like the two spin around you rides that's in Disneyland Park Okay, yeah, okay. sorry, 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 yeah. Um, if you are a larger person, and I feel like this is something that maybe we should cover off in some of the rides because it is something that we have been asked before. Like, I'm this size. Are there any rides that oh, yeah, yeah, fair, won't fair, work fair. for me, that will work for me, that kind of thing? Um, you don't have to worry about Dumbo. Dumbo is very accommodating. Oh, it's so accommodating. Like, the, the like, safety stuff, like, put in mind, you do have to put the, like, safety belt on on Dumbo. They don't let you get away with it even though you're an adult even and even though you're clearly not going to fall out they still make you buckle like the safety belt but it is so accommodating and there is so much room for you that you definitely do not need to worry about it whatsoever yeah. it's also not a big dip to step down into it either no and so you're not going to have difficulties getting out it is literally just like a regular step there's really no worries with dumbo i have to say now to be honest yeah it was only something that i thought of during the week that i was like maybe we should cover this all because i feel like it's a question that people have but yeah no it's fair it's fair yeah um i think as a whole people suffer with this problem less in disneyland paris because it's in europe rather than in america just from you know things but yeah it's definitely it's definitely a it's definitely a valid question and we can cover it from now on yeah i don't think any of the rides that we've spoken about with the exception of maybe casey jr because casey jr is a little tight see that's the thing that could but then you have rides that are clearly made for children anyway yes. and they're not yes. really made for like for adults to be sitting in one yeah. <laughs> so with those kind of things you could be like here you could have a completely perfect human with a, like a perfect bmi and they'll still be squished on it kind of thing yeah so in those kind of situations you have to be like well obviously then because you have this mid-range adult who would be regarded as normal and yeah. they're like oh my god my knees <laughs> yeah then it, then it's a tough time yeah um but yeah i think pretty much all the other ones um are pretty, are pretty fine pretty yeah. good um but yeah as we go on we'll we'll definitely mention it and we'll mention like uh exiting and entering the ride as well yeah absolutely also actually we have a update on dillil boats so sam the dot girl dot in dot the dot castle finally um sam was telling us that there is a separate area that you don't go onto the revolving platform that if you have a green pass or an orange pass or if you are pregnant that you load there rather oh, than ever excellent. dealing with the rotating platform it just it was too um, dangerous i knew there had to be something there has to be a better way but sam um sam has experience with an orange pass and um, so i did ask if she would be willing to potentially come on and talk to us about it and how it works and any specific rides like the little boats that you have to enter completely separately to as you would any of the kind of normal and ways that you would get on and off a ride so she said that she would be more than willing to do that so we'll get that organized for some time in the next few weeks who knows guys it's a fluid situation right it's just you gotta deal yeah. with it as it comes <laughs> yeah. but it's something that i'm really curious about because i've never experienced oh yeah same yeah mercifully touch wood i've never had to experience getting a green pass or an orange pass or anything like that i've always been able to body myself and been with able-bodied people um so yeah but i'm intrigued because I don't, I don't really know how it works. So I, I'm curious. Yeah, and it's one of those things that we can't really talk about because, because we've never experienced it, yeah. and we just don't think it's right for us to talk about something that we've never had experience with and start flouting our opinions. Which I know yeah. we've flouted our like own personal opinions as an outsider looking in on them, but oh, yeah. as a person who actually needs one and requires one and has to use one. Hmm. we definitely wouldn't talk about it in that manner so yeah. it'll be great to get sam on to um discuss that with us yeah absolutely and i think we've just about mired andrea enough that he's willing to come on and talk about castle club 
Andrea, yeah. your voice is so pretty. Everyone will love it. <laughs> <laughs> so we should have some guests soon, which will be very nice. Yeah, see, one year old and look, look, look how we're moving on, guys. Like guests galore. If you'd like to be on the podcast, give us. <laughs> oh, yeah, let us know. Message us on Instagram. If you've got something interesting or like an interesting like thing you've done within Disneyland Paris um, that's like a bit out of the norm or anything like that, hit yep. us a DM on Instagram um, and we'd love to have you on the show to talk about it because we've not done everything, but we still want to talk about everything. Oh, big time. Big time. <laughs> and now we can use Zoom. It's easier for everybody. Yeah, because now we don't have to figure out how we're going to get everybody everywhere. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Exciting um, times. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much it for to this week's episode. I think so. I really enjoyed this week's episode. We Me chatted too. galore. This was bad yeah, times. It was a bit of a random one. Also, thank you very much to everybody that sent us happy anniversary, happy birthday, whatever. Oh yeah, thanks so much. way people phrased it, uh, messages on Monday. It was very sweet and very much appreciated. Yes, thank you guys. We really we really loved it. And I also really loved all your replies being like, my ears, they bleed from my own voice. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody knows how I feel having to edit the podcast every week. I think I've just like, I think I've got to the stage now where I just completely ignore my own voice, so it's fine. Blank it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, when I was in college, I had to do a lot of recording my own voice for like voiceovers and stuff. And I remember in yeah. first year, I was like, "This is awful." And then by the end of first year, like, this is, "This is this is this is fine. I've got I've, I've, I've got hours for this." <laughs> you just you just become numb to it. It is what it is. Anywho, thanks so much for listening, guys. We really appreciate Absolutely. it as always. If you'd like to DM us on Instagram or hop onto our grid. So someone commented the other day, they were like, your grid is so beautiful. I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you'd like to come over and give us a couple of likes on our grid or follow us on Instagram, it's at Mickey Waffles Pod. Please do. Yeah, and let us know when you're listening to the podcast. I love when people post it. My favorite thing now is that people are sending in quotes from the podcast, which I find really hilarious. Everyone's are they? Great- what? Yeah, a couple of people have said, like, have sent little, like, quotes of, like, things that we've said. The particular, I suppose, point of um, conversation was Sam gradually going to bed whilst we were having our Disney drinks on the last episode. So oh, that right. made me laugh yeah. quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, let us know what your favorite thing that we talked about. What are you watching on Disney Plus? It's keeping you sane. Tell us. Oh yeah, please keep telling us those things. Just just like, or even if you're like making Instagram posts and like you maybe kind of thought that we possibly talked about it on the podcast, just give us a little ash there and we can yeah. share it on our stories then. And it's all yeah. one big, all one big Disney Instagram family sherry time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I think that's pretty much, I think we've exhausted it now, Kate. Yeah, I think I've I've said goodbye about three times now. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye guys. <laughs> <laughs>